Our cement plant in Speed is proposing to use cleaner burning alternatives to replace up to 50% of the coal we use to heat our kilns. Alternative fuels are used by cement plants around the United States and are approved by the Environmental Protection Agency. These fuels will reduce air emissions from the plant. Our plant in Logansport has used these fuels for more than two decades. The Logansport's facility will process and deliver the alternative fuel for use here at Speed. Here is a short video about the alternative fuels process at Logansport. We're at S Rock Cement Corporation in Logansport, Indiana, where we process waste derived fuel as an alternative fuel in the making of cement. This plant was established in 1962. We started burning alternate fuels in 1986. It produces roughly 450,000 tons of cement annually. The waste derived fuel primarily is a mixture of oils, inks, industrial cleaning solvents. We have perfume, fingernail polish, fingernail polish remover, a lot of paint material that comes from different car manufacturing. Alternatives, fuels actually burn cleaner in a kiln and have less emissions than what coal does. Once a customer receives their profile ID number, which is their approval number that they can ship to the Logansport facility, on their shipping document, which is a manifest, they will put that number on there and that's the tracking device. And they will schedule a load that they can bring the material to the plant. Behind me is a uh, EnviroVac. They are DOT certified to be able to haul hazardous waste. A typical tanker holds approximately 5,000 to 5,500 gallons. This plant receives approximately 20 loads a day. It's primarily what their usage needs in order to be able to burn 100% replacement. When a truck arrives to our facility, he will pull up on our scales. He will call us on his CB and we will record his weight. And then we will open the gate up and allow him access into the facility. He will back into a bay. Our loading bays are designed specifically for this type of material. For instance, our unloading area is all concrete. There's also an epoxy coating that is put on top of the concrete that is a double protection just to make sure that you would not ever have any ground contamination with the material. Once the manifest is given to the technician, which is an SROC employee, they will enter the profile ID number that is on the manifest into a computer that has a tracking system that will bring up what this company is approved to be able to ship to us. And then we will go out and take a sample of the material. The truck is sampled with a Kalawasa sampler and then the material that is in that tube is then put into a sample jar and then it is given to our laboratory to do analysis. We're standing here at the on-site laboratory. There are three stations in the lab. The first station, which is what we call the bomb station, it's called that because that's where we do the bomb calorimeter to do BTUs on the waste fuels. Uh, the second station is where the metals are done. The third station is where we test for PCBs, which are polychlorinated biphenols. All the information is then entered into a computer program and a report is printed out that they review to ensure that the materials can be blended safely in the tank farm. After it's been approved by the lab, we select which tank we're going to unload it into. We come out, we do a tank compatibility with the tanker, make sure there's no problems there. They'll hook the unloading hose up. They'll hook a vent line up to the very top of the trailer. They will turn the pump on and they will pump the material into a storage tank. We do have a vapor recovery system that recovers all the vapors during the unloading process. I've been here 28 years. If it wasn't safe, I sure wouldn't be doing it. Our facility here at Logan Sport has 10 storage tanks. They all sit inside of containment. The containment also has the epoxy coating just like the unloading station does. They are inspected daily. They are also inspected weekly and monthly by the technicians. The tanks are also protected so they will never be overfilled. We have two apparatuses. We have a pressure transmitter that's located at the bottom of the tank. You can see a display that will show us the total gallons that are in the storage tank. It's also programmed with a high level limit on it to where if the limit 
reaches what is programmed in it, shuts the power off to the pumps that are pumping to that tank. We also have a secondary high-level system. This is a Drexelbrook probe that we have installed on top of all our storage tanks. What happens is the material comes close to the contact of the probe on the bottom of it. It will shut the power off to the pumps to ever prevent ever overflowing of the tank. This facility also receives solid material. We process it through our solid processing system. This material primarily comes from refineries, from the material that they would clean out of the storage tanks. And we can process the material, disperse it into the liquids that we receive, and it makes a very good alternative fuel. We have to have more than one tank because we bring material in that has, say, a BTU value of 8,000, and some of the materials that we bring in have a higher BTU value, and so we blend the material in between the tanks to come up with our target BTU value. Uh, the material is transferred from one tank to another tank by a pump. It's also a recirculating pump that keeps the material mixed in the tank. Each tank is constantly turning over keeping all the fuel mixed up so we have uh, well blended fuel. Every tank is monitored by the level indicators that are on the tanks. They are all on a computer screen that the technician can see in the technician's office. Okay, we're gonna fill tank nine. You can see it up here. It's down to 9,200 gallons. It's time to fill it. We also have a blend program. That's how we determine what material will be transferred from one tank to another to come up with a specific blend. Once we have a tank filled, we'll take a sample out of the tank and it is analyzed. And once the results are back and it meets our burn specs, we will determine that that's the next tank that will be utilized. This is the control room at the Logansport plant. Behind me are the monitors and so forth that we monitor the process of making cement. Cement making tends to be more complex than most people realize. We take limestone, silica, and iron and aluminum products, mix that together, warm it up to 2700 degrees Fahrenheit to make cement. At the end of our process, we have a bag house that removes the particulate dust matter that is in the airstream, leaving the kiln system. What you see behind me is the number one kill bag house. It is a huge vacuum cleaner, very similar to what you would have on your house, except it's 2,000 times bigger. This bag house eliminates 99.9% .9 of all the emissions coming through the kiln. Most of what's in our stack is oxygen. What you see at the end of our stack tends to be steam. S-Rock is planning to burn alternative fuels at their speed plant, and we are working to help that happen. Our plan is and we'll ship the material from the Logan Sport plant here. We will be loading the trucks and it will work the same way as it does when we unload a truck. Once we have filled a tank, tested it, determined that it is kiln ready fuel for speed and we will put the material into the truck and the vapors that will be in the truck would go back into the storage tank. Once that's done, we will fill out a manifest and all the shipping documents that's required and the material will be shipped to speed. The material that we will be shipping to speed will be what we classify as kiln ready fuel. So once they arrive on site, they will have the same area, the same pump, the same containment. It is all required by law for this type of material. The unloading process for speed will be the same process that we have here at the Logan Sport plant. Only after the alternative fuels are tested, blended, and tested again in Logan Sport will they be delivered to speed, where they are placed in two reinforced storage tanks for use as fuel to replace coal, producing cleaner air from the plant.